What's up everyone and welcome back to 40 Rounds. Now, if this is your first time at 40 Rounds, I want you to smash that pink button down there that says subscribe on it. Go to our Facebook page and join the 40 Rounds running community and check out the description. There's loads of cool things, including the link to these bad boys. So this week we've got the Ultra Provision 4, so let's get stuck in. Right guys, so here it is the Ultra Provision 4. Now I was told to buy these shoes by a friend of mine because he noticed uh, on a few of my videos that I have been pronating uh, more and more and more. What I know myself is that when I get fatigued, I tend to pronate more. And in particularly on my recovery runs um, and when I'm running on tired legs, I have noticed that I am pronating more. And what that has meant is that on the uh, inside of my shins, and not necessarily shin splints, but it's getting tender. So on the days where I'm doing those recovery runs, I've noticed that uh, they're getting tender. And that's obviously a, a sign of one, overtraining, but two, uh, the fact that my running style is a little bit out. So that's why I got pointed to these. Obviously, you need to see a physio, get proper treatment, work on core and all that sort of stuff. But I'm trying to help myself as well, along with my running shoes. So a little bit about the Ultra Shoes first before we get onto the actual provision for and what they're like. Ultra Shoes come with this uh, foot shape toe box. Now, I don't know whether, how well the camera will show that. I'll try and uh, show that. But basically, this most normal shoes would come up here and your toes would sit like this, right? Um, it's coming up on the camera with the focus. What this promotes is a more natural toe placement. So obviously a more natural toe placement will give a more natural foot placement so you're less likely to incur problems. Makes sense, right? Also with this shoe, and this is not a minimalistic shoe, right? But this is a um, zero drop shoe. So you may have heard on, on even on some of my videos, we talk about the drop. So we talk about from the heel to the toe. Now this shoe has a zero drop. So there's no difference between the heel and the toe. What you'll find on a lot of neutral running shoes and shoes in general is that they'll have a heel to toe uh, drop and they promote different things. So a more, uh, what's the best way to describe it? So somebody who strikes more here on their foot will probably prefer a lower drop um, on the shoe. So like under six mil, if you're coming down this part where you're striking, it's probably suited more to you because if you had higher, uh, it would be a waste of time. If you come more here, a higher drop would probably suit you more because there's gonna be more cushioning, especially if you're heel striking. So that's kind of what drop is and what it's there for. Um, most importantly is to get a pair of shoes that fit you comfortable and do exactly what you want after you've had your gait analy uh, analyzed, right? But that's kind of what they say is that the more forward you are, the less drop, the more backwards you are, the more drop, right? But if you pronate, these shoes are aimed at helping you because they, Again, they promote a natural foot placement. So if you're like flat footed and stuff like that, this is one shoe to look at again, because they, tr they say that um, a, 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 a zero drop natural foot placement will make you run more efficiently, uh, more naturally, and you're less likely to get injuries and all that sort of stuff. That's what they say. So that's a bit about ultra, all that sort of stuff. And that's why I've got these. So this shoe in particular, has got the guide rail technology, uh, guide rail technology even. So I don't know whether you can see that again with the camera will focus on that. And this acts as a, uh, you know, like a bowling alley when you put the barriers up for the kids. So that kind of stops you from falling in. So if you come along now, that sort of catches you and holds you and it gives you an element of stability. You may have seen this now appearing on a few other shoes, Nike Infinity, for example. But the cool thing about the Provision 4, and this is where it gets interesting, is that you've got the inner arch, arch feature um, in this shoe. So what you have here, and I don't know whether this is going to come out on the camera, but you've got three sort of tabs in here. Now what they do, now they're not connected to the side of the shoe, they're connected underneath the shoe. Now what these things do, and I'm going to demonstrate with my fingers if I can. So imagine they're the three sort of things. Um, as you sort of roll in, these move up to sort of catch you and bring you back. So this, it's probably easy on this one. This one will come, I don't want the camera again focus, but this will come up and sort of hold your foot and bring you back, if that makes any sense. And the cool thing is with that, it's different for every person. So as you're moving around and your own foot strike, they will adapt to you. And that is the cool thing about this technology. So most importantly, have I found any difference? Well, yes, I have actually. On my recovery runs, which is where I've been putting these in, I have found a difference. I have found that I am getting less tenderness on the inside of my shins at the moment, which is, I think, down to this. I may be wrong. Um, 
I'm not doing any speed work in these, by the way. I'm only doing recovery runs and short runs in these at the moment. Um, but I have found a difference. I don't feel myself necessarily dropping that much on the inside. So where I do feel sometimes that my bad running style, and I'm conscious of my running style uh, when I'm going along, I have felt a slight difference. Whether it's up here or whether it's down to these, it's very, very interesting, the fact of the results I feel like I'm getting from the shoe. I like the toe box. I do like that wider toe box. Now I've got a slightly wider foot anyway, but I, I really am enjoying the more room in there with my feet. That is quite a nice feeling. The overall shoe itself, you've got a, a nice breathable mesh upper, as you'd expect uh, from most uh, shoes now these days. Lacing's okay. The heel area is padded to a degree. It's much of a muchness again. Feels like an Asics or something like that. You've got a nice sticky outsole, which is fantastic. Um, I've run these down the canal paths um, and they've been fine. I've not run these in the wet because it's been dry over here. Um, so I'm looking forward to trying these out in the wet, but I say the outsole is nice and sticky, so I don't see that being a problem. The shoe is um, reasonably light, it's 10.5 ounces. I think a lot of the weight comes from this um, midsole. So you've got, again, which is great. Uh, so you've got that minimalistic zero drop, but what they then put in is, is a decent amount of foam to give you an element of cushioning anyway. But so that's, I think, where the weight has come from, to be honest with you. But 10.5 10 ounces is not the end of the world, particularly for me. Like I said, when I'm running them for recovery runs, weight is not really an issue for me. So overall, I think this is worth trying out. If you are a pronator, uh, mild or, or a real pronator, I think it's worth having a look at Ultra, checking out their shoes. What I would say though, and this is a, a, this is a really important thing to say, if you're gonna transition from let's say a, a standard six, seven mil drop that you're used to, it's gonna take you a few weeks and a bit of time to transition down to something like this. You've gotta be careful that you don't get injured and you don't start pulling on your calves and stuff like that. That is one thing I would say. Now, my A6 Glide Rides are a five mil drop and my Evo Rides are a five mil drop, which I spend a lot of time in. Um, so I just would say that to you, it, just be aware that if you don't go out there and start smashing these every run and that sort of stuff, try and transition into them if you can. But like always, go and get your gait tested, get yourself fitted properly um, and checked out. But I think if you do pronate or, or like me, even a mild pronation with, when you get fatigue, have a look at these. I think it's very interesting. I can't wait to put more miles into this shoe because at the moment it's giving me good results.